Hi folks, uh, today we're going to talk about nutrition, focusing on sort of race day and, and on the bike more than just sort of general weight loss stuff. Um, I should start with the obvious, which is nutrition is individual. Um, it's going to be different for you and me. I'm not a nutritionist, my degree is in English. I was around a lot of experts, a lot of folks with PhDs, um, a lot of professional athletes who, who all know what they're doing. So I'm going to focus on is, is kind of giving you the basics here. And then your job isn't to chisel that in granite and, and completely match what I'm saying word for word. Uh, your job is to, to kind of take it in, um, follow it, and adapt it to what works for you and what fits your, your lifestyle and, and your just taste preferences really um, is a huge part of it. So, so we'll, we'll kind of accept that as the caveat. Um, all right, let's get into breakfast. The, well, actually, let's go backwards. Breakfast, a lot of people, I think, train super early in the morning before breakfast. Um, that's probably most people aren't professional cyclists who have all day to ride their bikes like, like I did. Um, if you do that, you need to be thinking about it the night before. You need to be thinking about what your, what your workout is coming up and fueling for it. Um, and that's probably just going to mean adjusting the carbs you have at dinner based on the workout that you have coming up. Um, now, in the more and and you need to stay more on top of the, the on the bike nutrition, your bars and your and your hydration, um, because you're sort of missing that window in the morning to, to really prepare for it. So, but the perfect world uh, pros we would treat we would try to treat every training ride the same way we would treat a race, and that includes nutrition and and timing and, and stuff like that. So. Uh, the, the basic the basic rule is you start eating breakfast three hours before the race starts, um, and then you're done kind of two and a half hours before. So that you get that timing dialed, that gives you time to digest, uh, to get organized, to poop, and you go to the start line. The, the A real pro can go directly from the porta potty to the start line. World Tour, you have a bus, um, and, and you poop there. But, uh, you know, Continental Pro is good, a good racer. Porta potty start line is a, is a good move. Um, for breakfast, uh, refer to the, the glycemic index again. It's, it's good to just sort of get to know it. Find the foods that you like on there um, and, and then see where they fit in to, to your day and, and your goals. Um, but you want to have a mixture of, of high and lower glycemic stuff. Uh, you definitely want to have the heavier carbs before, before your race day. You want to focus on that. Um, don't carb load. Don't, I'm not saying like have an enormous bowl of oatmeal uh, because today is race day, so I'm going to fuel excessively, you know, more than I normally do for a day. Uh, no, you need to have, you can, you can up it, but, uh, your job is to, to prime yourself and then, and then keep it topped off, uh, which we'll get into, but it's not, you know, you, you have, you have a huge, you know, pizza or something three hours before the start and all the blood's in your stomach trying to digest it and you're already fighting yourself. You're already off the back. Uh, don't fall into that. You should be generally eating about the same thing for every day. Um, that's sort of my move was I had the same, you know, basic breakfast, lunch, dinner arc, uh, and I would adjust the carbs based on my workouts and, and what I have going on and my goals at that time. Um, so, so for example, my, my go-to, I'm from Georgia, my go-to for a very long time was a bowl of grits and two or three scrambled eggs. So if I'm doing, you know, uh, if I'm having a recovery day, maybe I have less grits. If I'm having, if I'm doing a big day, maybe I add and have a bigger bowl of grits or I'll add some toast or something like that. Um, and that's about as much as it gets. You're not doubling or tripling your intake. Um, I'm not getting to get, get into like weighing or the number of cups. I never measured anything. Uh, you know what a big bowl of oatmeal is versus a small bowl. Um, my, my go-to this year, another thing that pros have to do is you have, uh, you have a different, either you change teams or your team, your team changes nutrition sponsors. Um, so you have to learn to take, to take what works for you and adapt it to what's available or you're in different countries. Um, so, so this year my, my nutrition sponsor is, is picky bars. I've never had uh, an, an oatmeal sponsor before, but my go-to for breakfast has been the, the beets and chocolate oatmeal from picky bars. It's delicious, but if you think about it, you've got your oatmeal, which kind of takes a little longer to digest and burn, uh, and then you've got beets, which is which is more sugar and chocolate. Uh, there's also like chia seeds and almonds, so this is a good go-to. It's like kind of well-rounded in, you know, one will start burning, you know, half an hour after you eat it, and the other one will kind of keep you going during the day. Um, so think about, take a look at the glycemic index, 
see what you like and see sort of how it fits into uh, to, to that, that arc of the day. So you have some short um, or some low and some high and, and a good mixture. Um, and then we'll get into uh, your coffee. Coffee, um, you want to time that. Caffeine sort of is supposed to take about 60, 45 minutes, something in there before it hits. So they would sort of hand us that as you're getting off the bus to go to sign in. Um, but, but sort of time it that way. If, if you, if someone, someone explained to me once that if you, uh, get caffeine, I guess like any drug, the, the less your body usually gets it, the more potent it is, uh, on, on race day. So if you have the self-control to, to not have caffeine five days a week and only have it, uh, Saturday, Sunday for your big rides, it's going to be more useful. Um, when they, when they explain that to my team, we're all like, yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll knock off caffeine five days a week. Um, and nobody did that. But, uh, so this is, this is what coffee looks like. It comes in a can, you pour it in a mug. Um, or if you're in Europe, it's, it's that kind of mug. Um, so that's, that's the main thing. Caffeine, you know, don't go crazy with it. You get the, you get the, the jitters. You, get, you can definitely have too much caffeine. Um, keep it civil. One cup of coffee is fine. Uh, one espresso is good. The uh, also in in that in that range, we'll get into hydration as well. When you start the race, um, you want to have I would sort of go one one bottle of mix and electrolyte and and one bottle of of plain water, and then you mess with that as well. So if it's a if it's a super hot day and you're going to be sweating a lot, maybe you want to have more electrolyte. Um, if it's kind of colder out, then, then, then you can go less, you can dilute it. So for this, I'll, I'll usually start, um, Monster Hydro is my, my hydration sponsor this year. So I'll start with one bottle uh, of that and then one bottle of water, or sometimes I'll just do half and half. I'll just dilute two bottles, um, with the hydro. Uh, this does have caffeine, so I wouldn't have six of these if you're doing a six hour ride. Um, that's probably gonna be too much. There is sugar in that, which, which I like. If you're a sugar fan as I am, um, sugar is a thing that if you, you have it during the ride, you're just going to burn it. Um, so I, I kind of like having, at least that always worked for me is having, having some sugar before, like not being afraid of it. The, if you're going to, if you're a person who's into sugar, if you're a person who loves brownies, cakes, cookies, um, have that at your mid ride stop. That's when you have your cookie and you can have it guilt free. Cause you're going to, you're just going to buzz home with it. Um, it's better to have it then than sort of to, to binge on cookies before bed, for example, like have, you know, have, in, enjoy that. And that's, that's kind of your spot for it. Those, those go together real nice. Um, but, uh, this is the start with that. So you want to say for hydration, um, one bottle per hour of, of liquid is, is the goal. So if, uh, if you're, if you're super new, then break it up, you know, try to finish a fourth of a bottle every 15 minutes. And at some point, once you think about it that way, uh, it'll be second nature. You'll just find yourself reaching for it. Um, and, and you'll get used to it. The, if it's cold out, you might have to force it. If it's raining, it's really easy to forget to drink. Um, but just because it's raining doesn't mean you're not sweating. Uh, stay on top of it, pay attention and, and definitely like you, you do have to force it and, and it's worth it. Um, also, so it's one bottle an hour and then the other kind of real basic rule of thumb would be one bar an hour. So you can, they, they, I think they say you can process like 200 calories is sort of what your body can digest. Um, that's about what one of these picky bars is. Um, they've got a bunch of free, what I do, what, what I do with all the flavors and bars is I kind of get addicted to one at a time and I want nothing else for a week. And then, and then I finish that box. I never want to see that flavor again. Um, Picky Bars has a bunch of these. They have, they have cute names. This is the Need for Seed. So it's got sunflower butter. Um, this is the Moroccan Your World with turmeric, ginger, and pistachios. Um, but these are all just tasty and there's a kind of a good variety. There's one that's got, um, there's a poop joke. Which one of these? Um, this is called Ah Fudge Nuts. Yeah. These are, that's fun, but whatever, whatever kind of bar that works for you. Some people get, you know, some show offs and make their own bars and rice cakes. Um, I never, I never got myself to do that either, but it, it can be done. Um, what else? If, uh, back to hydration, you're, you're staying on top of the one bottle per hour. Um, keep an eye on, this is great. Keep, you know, keep an eye on your urine. It, it's not, it's not necessarily a rule that if your urine is bright yellow, you're dehydrated, but it's, it's kind of generally true. Um, so if, 
you know, if you if you stop to pee mid ride and you see it's bright yellow, like go go slam a bottle. Um, pay attention to that and sort of you know learn and, and think about when it's hot what happens. Your body will kind of adjust. I think it'll adjust its sweat rate uh, based on time of year and sort of where you come from, where you're used to. Um, when it you know when it first turns to spring, you have kind of a, a hot snap. Um, you will it'll be easier to dehydrate if you go from a lot of guys would go from Colorado to California early in the year and they're just they're just sweating bullets and they're not used to it. Um, so it is there is an advantage to to being prepared for it and then overcompensating if if your body is shocked for whatever reason. Um, so you keep that up uh, a lot of times, kind of with an hour to go in the race. It's it's you know you're not going to digest the bar that you eat 15 minutes before the end, um, but you will. So now you're looking more at the higher glycemic stuff. The the sugar uh, caffeine is good to kick in then. So if you stop if you stop to rehydrate, if you stop at like a 7-Eleven or something, um, this is actually a really good option. You'll have sugar, you'll have uh, you'll have caffeine, and that'll keep you going until the end of the day. Um, or if you do like a caffeine gel, hit that one hour before the end. It'll kick in for the sprint. Um, you'll dust me either way in the sprint, but but that's that's good for you. Um, all right, that's that's all that stuff. And then after the ride, the uh, you you got to hit your recovery. So the so now we're we're still the glycogen is is the key. The glycogen window is uh, basically. Your, your body is, is pushing all the glycogen out, you're, you're burning it as you train, uh, as you race, and then for a, a brief, the glycogen window is sort of, I think it's 30 minutes, maybe 60 after the workout, uh, your body is really trying to absorb that back in. It's looking for glycogen, it's looking for more carbs to get back in. Uh, so don't, don't get in the car and drive home right after the race. Um, slam either like a recovery drink the, the Monster Hydro is like, it's, you know, just throw these in the back of my car, have it in the race bag, whatever, and you pound that, um, protein, carbs, and that'll at least get you, a lot of times I'll do it, I'll finish my workout, I'll slam one of those, I'll take a shower, and then, and then I'll make, I'll make food and, uh, and have like an actual proper meal, but you hit something like that right away, right off the bike, a little recovery drink, um, and that will, that will guarantee you, your, a big part of your replenishment happens right then. Um, that's it. That's our, that is our on the bike race day nutrition scenario. Um, I hope that helps and, uh, we'll, we'll do more of these, uh, go to the Strava club if you've got questions or comments or, or details. Um, and we'll do it next time. Peace.